Parrot Anafi, 4K video, 21 megapixel stills, quiet rotors, 21 plus minute flight time. A whole lot of fun awaits. It's my second drone. I'm really excited to fly it today. And um, the camera is supposed to be pretty awesome. French design, Chinese built. <laughs> it should be a pretty fun time. Ready to fly? First flight, pretty exciting. Okay, I've got green on the GPS on both. And I've got uh, almost full battery on both. Okay, looks good. Okay, it started uh, video automatically, which is really awesome about the Anafi. Right, she's a little shaky, but looking good. Just gonna take her up. some strong interference again. I don't know why that is with the Wi-Fi. So as I got a little bit further out from where you see the video now, um, the GPS connectivity on the Anafi ended, it, it failed, and the screen, the video that you see now, like I stopped seeing video, there was nothing for me to see at all, and I had to come back without any video and without any GPS, so I couldn't do return to home, it was a really bad failure. So what you're seeing here is me flying dead reckoning. No video, no GPS, I can't use return to home, I just brought it back manually. Luckily I was in visual line of sight and I knew the orientation of the Anafi and was able to bring it back home. Could you imagine someone flying beyond visual line of sight, even though you're not supposed to, just imagine it happening. And you lose video, you lose GPS connectivity, it won't come back. What do you do? How do you get your drone back if you can't even see it? You know, it makes a case for staying visual line of sight. What a perplexing issue. I've never before lost GPS connectivity during a flight. Also, as you can see there, the snowy, gray, snowy background, that's what I saw. Just as you see this here, not connected in the red at the top, uh, the red GPS on the drone, the signal, and then the snow, that's exactly what I saw in the app as I was 500 feet away from me. And, you know, luckily I was VLOS. Luckily, you know, I could see my drone because otherwise, how would I have known which way I was facing at that moment to turn around and come back? If I wasn't VLOS, there was no way I was getting back. So this was a major problem for me, and it's a major problem for anyone who flies the Parrot and Naffy, in my opinion. This could happen to you. So to summarize what's happening here is I rebooted the app, I turned the Anafi off and then back on, and um, 
everything was green again as you see the top of the screen GPS for both the the uh, Anafi and the Anafi controller were in the green again and so I wanted to go up and see you know maybe it was just a fluke and it probably was a fluke but hopefully that fluke doesn't happen to anybody when they're beyond VLOS and it also makes a case for not flying the Parrot and Nafi, uh, anything but VLOS. And so, you know, that's, that's a no-brainer, I guess, but certainly something that I'm going to have to consider whenever I fly the Nafi. So at this point, the GPS failure has already happened. I've landed, rebooted the drone, and rebooted the app, and everything is working fine after that. You know, I'm flying again, no problems, no issues. You know, this video probably sounds a little bit negative, but actually, other than that issue, the Anafi flew really well. I actually like flying the Anafi. It's very agile. It turns very quick. It's fast. It, uh, it's an awesome drone. I think there are a lot of good things about this drone, so I don't want to be too negative about it. And especially if you're an Anafi fan, you know I don't want to bring you down because that's not my issue. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to say is this thing happened to me, and it was major. And it happened to me on you know the initial flights where I was trying it out for the first time. So. I was not experienced with the Anafi at all when this happened, and you know, part of me being able to get it back safely with no GPS and no video was skill, but there was a lot of luck involved too, because I, like I said, I could have been in the sun, I could have, you know, been uh, a little bit beyond VLOS, so I couldn't determine my orientation. So many things could have gone wrong, and I could have lost the drone on the first day I flew it. And so, you know, it does sound a lot negative, and it was a bit of a, a scary time. But overall, I really like the Anafi. This is some beautiful video of the coast of where I live. And these uh, tidal pools are along the coast. Um, generally when the tide's coming back in or not fully low, uh, there you see me, uh, you know, I'm there guiding the, uh, the drone. Um, coming in to the tidal pool, I noticed uh, visually from where I was standing that there was a bird that flew over near where the drone was. He wasn't afraid of the drone. I, I don't think he could actually hear the drone. I think I was up a little bit, maybe close to 100 feet or so. Um, so he was down there. Yeah, I was at like 79 feet. And, uh, you know, it looks like, oh my God, I scared him, but I didn't. Those birds, they do that. They skim around the coast. They go from tidal pool to tidal pool. Uh, you see them along the highways. Uh, cars are going by at 55, 60, 65 miles per hour and the birds just sit there in a tidal pool. They don't fly away. So, you know, the, as, as you can see there, I'm, I'm over him now. He's not afraid of me. He's not afraid of the drone, and I wasn't harassing him. I just happened to see him down there. He's a beautiful bird, and um, there's a lot of beautiful wildlife in this area. This is um, just some marshland uh, near the beach. Uh, I like flying back here because it's, it's just beautiful. Uh, also, there's some debris that comes up on this uh, this little area, and so sometimes whenever I fly over low enough, I can see weird things. Like, for example, there's uh, there are buckets, there are shoes that wash up. Um, there's even an engine, probably 10 feet from where I'm standing, where you saw me there. There's an actual engine and transmission uh, all rusted out together where the salt water has basically eroded it and just sort of melted it together as one big iron rusty clump. 
So very very strange things come up, come aground. I don't know if you can see that tidal pool in the distance there. There's a little white speck. That's again that's that bird, and uh, he's uh, he's there. And so I'm I'm flying back. He's actually about 50, 60 feet from where I'm standing, flying the drone. He's not afraid of me at all. I mean I'm making noise. You know I'm, you know, uh, commenting and stuff like that as I'm recording. But he's not afraid of me. You can see how the wind's buffeting the drone. Now the wind wasn't that strong. It was maybe five, six knots. Um, so I noticed that that happens whenever I descend. If you ever uh, notice in this video, whenever I'm actually losing altitude, it just kind of it shakes. So that that's interesting. Something I noticed. Again, beautiful colors, beautiful area. A real joy to fly there. Again, you can see that tidal pool up ahead at the top of the screen. The little white speck is the bird from earlier. He's still there, totally unafraid of the of the anaphy. He's totally unafraid of me. As you can see, I'm facing directly towards him almost. He's about 60 feet away from me, maybe closer. It's hard to tell from this distance. almost 200 feet from him, uh, the drone is rather. That's just a picture of uh, the process picture of the shot I just took from 160 feet or so. There's another one coming up. I blew it up a little bit to make it fit the screen. There's that bird you can see at the bottom of the screen. 21 megapixel stills on this drone uh, are pretty awesome because if you take a shot and you you find that you don't want to use the full breadth of the shot, you can zoom in in Photoshop or whatever you use, and uh, you lose some pixel, you know, some some resolution that way. But with 21 megapixels, you have some megapixels to spare, so you are able to zoom in, as opposed to whenever I take pictures on my DJI Spark which come out beautifully, but if I need to zoom in, I, I really can't because I'm going to lose resolution and it won't look as good. So 21 megapixels is a lot of resolution to play with. See the batteries at 20%. That's one of the issues, by the way, that I have with the Peridonafi is that unlike the DJI Spark, the Peridonafi gives only a percentage of battery charge. And so what you have left, it just tells you the percentage. Well, that's hard to determine. Like if you're 100 yards offshore and you've got 15% battery life left, um, you know, it's hard to determine how much time that is unless you are pretty good at it, pretty experienced. Um, you know, the DJI Spark, for example, tells you like you have about three minutes left or four minutes left. So you can look out and say, I'm 100 yards out. I need to get into shore. I've only got three minutes left, you know. So anyway, it's, it's interesting how the Peridonafi is so good in so many ways and so intuitive. But in some ways, they just didn't go that extra step to give the pilot more information or the information that the pilot really should have. Again, I'm just flying around here. Most of what I'm doing is just keeping the, the NAFI airborne to see if I'm going to lose GPS. As you, can, as you notice, I'm not too far away from uh, the drone. And so I think as I turn here, you might even be able to see me, but I'm just to the right of the drone as it's flying in this orientation. And I'm just not getting too far away because I, I'm, I'm gun shy, so to speak. You know, I've just had a major uh, GPS signal loss, uh, no transmission coming from the drone so that I can see my orientation through the camera. Um, you know, it kind of it, it spooked me a little bit.
still not experienced enough with the Anafi to know that whenever the battery gets very low, will it just park it or will it switch to return to home? You know, I, I just haven't had that happen yet. I know the Spark will return to home as long as it has enough battery, but if you skip return to home, like you cancel return to home and you keep flying and the battery gets low, the Spark will land wherever it is so that it doesn't crash and fall out of the sky. Uh, I'm sure the Parrot Anafi does the same thing. The question I have is, does it go right to auto land or does it try return to home first? I, I assume it does return to home first. Just haven't had enough experience. Well, that's about all I got today. You know, overall, I like the Parrot Anafi. I like a lot of things about it, actually. I think they're on the right track. Are they fully there yet? Mm -hmm. Considering the GPS loss of signal and loss of video while I was 500 feet away from, from home and my inability to hit return to home because it had lost GPS, I can't say that I can fully recommend the Parrot and Nappy for your next drone. However, I would say keep it on your radar. Maybe that was a firmware issue that they can fix in a future update. I'm just not sure. I am going to call Parrot and ask them about this issue and see if they know anything that maybe will help me avoid that from happening in the future. Well, again, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you have any comments or if you've gone through any of these things yourself with your Parrot and Nappy, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. I'm Joseph. This is CC for CC Loves Drones. Have a great one, guys.